so I'm back to work in this little Just Because book, and this one's going to be all about texture. Okay, who am I kidding? Most of my stuff is all about texture, but I'm really thinking about texture on this, different kinds of texture. And one of my favorite ways to add texture is to make clusters. Clusters mean different things to different people. So here are some of mine. Um, it could be a little tiny thing, just little bits of fabric and fibers, and this got a little piece of bark on it. Usually it just means gathering up the scraps of things on my desk and playing around with them until I like the way they are. And so these are blues, but they're not quite the right blue for here. So I'm going to make some. And I've got my scraps of things that definitely go along with these colors. And I tend to go for three to five, but please don't use that as a rule. You don't need to use any particular number of stuff. This is some great um, carpet samples that a friend gave me, and the colors are just perfect for that. Uh, what else do we have? Maybe a little bit of cheesecloth. I just cut it random. One of the things I always seem to have a use for when I'm doing clusters is my seam ripper, and that's because I don't like straight edges. I like things that look like they've caught on the branches of the trees when you're running through the forest. And sometimes I'll just keep doing it until part of that falls away, and that's okay too. There we go. And that's just my style. You might like it to be a little bit more precise, and that's fine too. The thing about clusters is you can't do them wrong. You might like some better than others, but you really can't do them wrong. And because I tend to make a lot of clusters, because I use a lot of clusters in my work, I save aside little scraps. Little bits like this, once they're piled together, can make some really interesting clusters. I have little bits of lace and threads. I always have the extra threads. I've distressed this. You can do a whole bunch of little scraps like this and throw them in a um, pillowcase or one of those zippered bags and let them go through the, the washing machine a few times and they're going to get even more shredded. I especially like shredding bits of lace because you get just some neat edges. It looks so much better. And let's do this one come into where the holes are then you kind of you get it where it's going to hang neat and I don't plan where I'm going to cut it I just hack at it until I like it all right and I've got needles threaded so and I don't have a page that I'm planning this for right now I need something else kind of light and this is going to be a book that's in blues and grays so so I've got this other kind of shredding over here. I'm just going to pull my threads. Yeah, this is some old cotton. It, it frays very nicely. All right. So what's going to be the top? What's going to be the bottom? I don't try and do them where they're going to be perfectly aligned either. I like things kind of off-center because I'm kind of off-center. All right, I like that. And some cheesecloth that's going to come down. What lace do I want on top? I think that's a slightly different color, so it's going to go back there. I don't usually add beads at this stage uh, if I'm making a bunch of clusters at once. I might add, uh, wait to add beads until I see what project they're going to go in. Okay, and I've been kind of holding it in the center here. And fibers on top always. And I can use these. I also save these threads. I might have something that I like in here. It's a little bit of blue. I have another bag of threads that are all sorted by color, but I couldn't put my hands on them right away. The thing about just loose threads like this, is you can just sort of put them together and you get a little pile of something. You just have to make sure you're going to get everything caught down. 
think that's actually going to go on top. These guys, they're the same length everywhere, and so that's a little too precise for me. So I separated these out. A couple things I could do. I can tie a knot where I want them to go, and I kind of think I like that idea, but I think I do that. The idea about tying a knot with fibers like this is then you have something to stick your needle through when you're attaching things. And they're going to come, okay, so they're going to come through differently. That's fine. I'm not going to stress about that because it's just going to make it look a little bit more organic. And I have a blue one left that slid out. I kind of want short ones at the top. I just decided. I only just decided that. You can always give them a haircut afterwards. Tie a knot so I can get something in there. All right, then I'm going to take my little threads and put them around by my knot and pick my cluster back up. Oh yeah, I like that. And you can do this a couple ways. If you already know in your book or on your project where this is going to go, you can just stitch it right to it. But because these can kind of be fiddly with a lot of loose bits and I want to make sure I have everything attached, I like to stitch them first and then I can attach them. And when you go to attach them in your book, you can either stitch them in your book or you can certainly get some Fabri-Tac or something else. Okay, this is decided it wants to knot and that's great because that just gives me one more loop. I'm just going to pull it back a little bit when I come in here so that it's not quite so big. There we go. It just looks like I did an embroidery loop on it. Okay, and I'm just going to take a few random stitches here. I just want to make sure that everything is actually tacked, <clears throat> tacked down. And it's usually only a problem if I'm doing a whole bunch of really fine threads on top or <clears throat> if I'm doing um, jute, like I'll separate some jute. All right, that looks like everybody's attached. So that could go on my cover. I tend to not cut these until I'm done because I might decide, you know, I could tie a bead onto them if I want. But because this is in the color family, this could go anywhere in the book. Ooh, I kind of like it on that. But I am not going to attach it yet. I'm going to make something else to do some more texture, and I'll make probably some more clusters. Okay, if these were both in my same color family, I might decide I want to put this one down here and this one close enough on the other side that I can stitch them together. You don't have to, but that's just something else I can think about doing. Yeah, I definitely, I like it on this page, so that's probably where it's going to go. Now, something else I can do with texture. I've got some rings, and I could do a couple things. I could put them down, like on the cover, and then stitch over them so I would get a wrapped ring, and that would be a nice effect, and I might do that. But I had these little scraps left of just the fabric that I had cut. It's just this fabric there where I cut it off the edge, so I know it's going to go with my stuff. And I'm going to just wrap it around this ring. And then it's going to give me a couple of options when this is wrapped. You could do this with some sari ribbon. You could do this with yarn. You could do this with, you know, with fuzzy stuff. And this is something you can do up ahead of time as well. All right, I'm really close to the edge there. I'm not going to worry that it's not exact. But I am going to make sure it stays. You could do this with lace. That would be really pretty. So I'm not stitching this. I'm just going to wrap my thread around. And I bet I can slide this just a little bit. And then you're not even going to see that gold that was there. And you can do several layers of this. I could do this and then come back over it with the lace and part of it would, would show, but I kind of like the way this is getting all hairy. And so I think once I know that this is down, or you could do this with cheesecloth and leave some of it hanging down. This part wants to come untied, so we're just gonna put a little stitch through it. All right, so that is covered. And you could probably go around that a few more times, but I'm gonna stop there so I can show you a few ideas. One, you can just, you know, tack it to your page just like that. Two, you could wrap something else around it so that it was hanging down. Or you could do several of them in several sizes 
and make a grouping like that, maybe in some complementary colors. So I'm going to play around with that idea. If you have a bigger ring, let's do this with the bigger ring. I'm liking this idea already. All right. Um, where am I going to do it? I'm going to do it on this. And I think we're going to go slightly off center. I'm going to wrap it with some sari ribbon. Really quick and easy. I'm just going right over my loose edge. I'm going to do that a couple times so it's kind of thicker at that end just because I like the way that looks. It's just a personal preference of mine. Take some thread and this one I am going to want to make sure that it is secure. All right, now it's my ring and it's a little lopsided which is what I wanted and I'm going to stitch it right here. Now you might find it easier to decorate your pages before you put your book together. I'm not going to worry about my backside because this is a just because book and there are things that I can do to hide it if I want to or embrace it if that's the choice I want to make. But right now I just want to get it down. Okay, that's down enough. I'm going to leave my needle threaded. I'm just going to put it off to the side here. Okay. So it looks nice like that. I can put some little French knots in there or something else. But I can also take my scissors. I'm just going to cut a little X and a little more of an X. And I can make a little window. And I could fold it either way. Now you could cut it all the way out if you wanted to, but I'm just going to have my needle threaded. I'm just going to come back around with my needle and see if I can just, it's not going to be a big window. If you want a big window, use a bigger ring. But I always like to put a little window in the books. It's just fun. And you could be very precise with this, or you could not worry about it. The choice is yours. Each time I make a window, they come out a little different. Uh, again, because I'm not precise, because it's just not my thing to be precise. <laughs> I love looking at people who do precise work. I just know it's just not me. And I'll show you the back side when I get this all stitched down. You'll see how hideous it is, and you'll see some ideas around it. Now, it would probably hold it even tighter um, faster, I guess, if, or if you're one of those people that wants to do everything fast, if you're using something thicker uh, to wrap around the window pieces, but I'm not as worried about that. I want this wonky window look. It's almost like a little bit of a windowsill. It's not. Okay, it's not, but I like it. It works for me, and that's all that it has to do, right, is work for me. And I'm just going around until I use up my thread. That's all. My needle wand to come unthreaded. That's fine. That's all I'm going to do then. And I'm just going to let that hang. All right, so it's wonky here. But there's stuff that I can do. I can stitch all the way around here if I want to. I might do that. I can loop um, threads through there, thread my needle and loop things through there. I'm not going to worry about it right now. I just wanted to get the window. So I could show you because then, I don't think I have any pretty beads. Okay, I have a little stone. This wouldn't be what I would use here, but let's see if I can make it so you can see. You would have a little something pretty shining through your window. Uh, if you had <clears throat> a button that was perfect, that would be another one that you could put in there. You could totally fill the whole window with a button. But I think I'm going to do some more stitching around there, and I could put my cluster here. I could have my cluster. Oh, that looks pretty against the white, doesn't it? But those are two ideas to get you started on your Just Because book. Now, what else could you do? Well, you could stitch on a piece of fabric and stitch that down like that. Take the fabric and cover it with lace and then cover it with more lace and put a button. That's not the right color button, but you get the idea. Let's see. White button. Uh, you could 
do more rings. Do some very nice precise rings. You could, uh, this is great material to stitch on, so depending on what you've made your book out of, so I'm probably going to do some stitching in here, maybe some feather stitch and some knots and things in here. You could just fill the whole book with clusters. One of the things I like to do with clusters is have them hanging over the edge of a page. You, know, you can make a, a big cluster that filled this whole side of the page. And what I love about a Just Because book is when there's stuff coming out all over the page. So please, if you make a Just Because book, if you're working on something like this, tag me so I can see it. If you're in the Facebook group, please share it with us because we love to see them. I'm looking forward to filling this up. See you next time.